This is Tax Pro Nation, the home of independent tax professionals. Find community, maximize your earnings, and live life on your own terms. I'm your host, Jeff Dolan, Vice President of Pronto Tax School. And I'm your co-host, Andy Fry, founder and CEO of Pronto Tax School. My grandfather started Pronto Income Tax in Los Angeles back in 1965. My father and I carried on the family business and became tax business entrepreneurs. I launched Pronto Tax School because I know that given the right training and tools, you too can experience the freedom the tax business can offer. I grew up with a dad who wasn't working all the time, who had time to spend with his five children, who could take us to the beach on a Tuesday if that's what he wanted to do. The tax business can be an ideal business for people who want that kind of freedom, but it's got to be done purposefully in order to work that way. And that's why we're here, to help you navigate your journey as an independent tax professional. Don't do it alone. Join the nation. Let's jump in. Welcome to episode eight, where we will be discussing step eight of the nine steps of the Pronto Path, which is our map of the journey you will take as an independent tax pro. In this opening series, we are tackling one step per episode. Step eight is called transformation. Your business is profitable even when you're not there. Well, that sounds interesting. <laughs> that sounds good. It sounds like a good option to have. Yeah, be definitely excited for this for this episode as well as just really enjoying this whole podcasting thing. You know, I was telling you before, you know, I never really had listened much to podcasts. Now that I started listening to more podcasts, uh, I feel like this is a really great format. Um, why did you think and and take the leadership, Jeff, on on bringing this podcast and putting it all together? Why did you think that? This is such a good format for our, for us to help our independent tax pre- uh, professional uh, members and, and any independent tax pro out there. Why do you think this, this podcast was a good way to do that? Having a smaller operation, you know, my question was, how do we help the most amount of people? How do we get the word out about this to, to the most amount of people? And having a show like this is one of those ways, right? And we had debated, you know, do we do kind of a uh, behind the scenes, you know, uh, documentary type of video series on YouTube, some sort of vlog style. Do we do podcast? And and I think the reason we landed here is because you all listening are very busy. I mean, let's be honest. If you if you're watching a video, you have to stop what you're doing. You have to look at it and listen to it, and, being, and that's all you're doing. Whereas if you're listening, you could be doing something else. You could be driving, you could be working out, you can be helping with the kids, you know, going to the beach, whatever you're doing. Uh, you can be learning and, and bettering yourself. This episode is about transformation. So this is the second to the last step in the Pronto Path. This is kind of a big step for anyone in any business. If you're an entrepreneur, to be able to step away from your business because you're uh, you put all the systems in place. You're profitable enough. You've communicated your vision to your employees. They they can carry on the business as if they were you, as if they knew and had all the skills that you had, and uh, and they're probably doing it much better. And now you're able to say, okay, what is what does life on my own terms look like? And a lot of tax professionals won't ever get to that point. Because I think that a lot of tax professionals, um, since you know, you got to remember, I grew up in this in this business, so I, I know as well as training, you know, many many thousands of tax professionals nationwide. And I think as a culture, as as um, the type of business owners that a lot of us are, is is maybe we don't want that. Mm. Maybe you don't want to not be there. Is you like being there in some way, or it somehow is a part of your life that. You know, we see a lot of our tax uh, school members, Jeff, that they work into their, you know, 80s. They work into their 90s. And I can think of um, uh, one of our tax school members, uh, uh, Tony Diaz, based out of Banning, California. His father uh, is 96. And, you know, this is his his final tax season. And I'll, I'll probably figure out, like, he's... He may come back again next next tax season. You know, like we we don't really like to retire in the conventional sense. So sometimes we don't set up our businesses to transform. And we're going to get into as we go through this episode, 
why that is, and maybe that's not the best approach. But I think that might be a good place to start because I think some people that are listening to this might say, "Well, I don't want to not be at my business," you know, and, right. that, and that might, and that's something that um, we're going to get into why to build your business so that it still works that way. But I think that's a good place to start. And I also would say, which I'm hoping that you can comment on, Jeff, is a lot of people don't start a business with the end in mind. Right. You know, so you you, you were talking uh, as we were preparing for the show about the artist and the lead singer of a band versus being the manager owner of the band and and kind of just how sometimes in life we get into things, right? And we don't know whether where it's going to lead and all that. And if you want to have a transformed business, there's a kind of a consciousness that you need to have ahead of time. Right. Um, it's, it t- tell me about that and why that sometimes prevents people from getting past this step. Yeah. So especially recently, you know, I would say in the past five years, it's been very sexy to be an entrepreneur. I mean, it's very popular, right? I think the last crash was what, 2008, 2009. So we've had a really good run since then of nothing but prosperity and growth and a few little dips. But for the most part, this younger generation has never been through a, a downturn in the economy, right? So you have a bunch of people that are very excited to put on their social media that they're an entrepreneur. You have a lot of people that are really excited to say to in a, you know, it used to be if you were an entrepreneur, that meant you were unemployed, right? <laughs> so, so, but now it's, it's pretty popular to say, hey, I started a business. I'm an entrepreneur, you know, well, great. That, that's awesome. And so you're the rock star, right? And so you are the lead singer of your rock band and you are an entrepreneur, and, and some entrepreneurs today, they are at rock star st- status. You know, I mean, gosh, I've been to some of these, these big events with these big speakers and they are rock stars. When you have that rock star mentality, it'd be like telling the lead singer of a band that you, you need to step down. And they're just like, I am the band. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> right? Like, you're not going to tell Bono, sorry, Bono. Like, you're not part of U2 anymore. You need to sell off U2. Like, what? No, that's not going to happen. So, so the mindset when you start your business is, is you have to know ahead of time, or at least if you don't know, think about it, right? Think about structuring your business in a way that you would one day step away whether that means you would still own it, keep an eye on it, guide it, lead it, or whether you would sell it. I think it's very important if you're, if you're wanting to make it to the transformation step uh, to keep the end in mind. And the end not needing you right. <laughs> to, be, uh, to, to be achieved. Because um, you know, as we'll get into, it's like father time catches up with everybody. And uh, we're all not going to be around forever, no matter what. This transformation step is all about thinking ahead and, and planning ahead and taking those actions all along the path that we've been talking about uh, to be able to uh, allow this to happen for your business to continue on, uh, even if when you're not there and do well. So it's it's a really big step. I think it's a it's tough from an ego perspective, uh, especially uh, as a man of you know I, I you know we, sometimes we get into the Superman complex of like you know when. When I'm there, I can figure out anything that comes up. And honestly, if you get to this step of the path, that's like kind of true. You know, it's it's kind of true <laughs> to certain. Like if you can't figure it out, nobody can. And so when you're there, uh, when you, and and you like that, you're almost addicted to that. But then it gets to a point where you start realizing, like, if I was to not be there, and I'm still acting like this now this isn't going to help my business transform and become something different than it is now, aka needing me all the time. So uh, I think there's an ego um, you know, thing that can happen. And you also made a good point about um, in terms of why this step is so tough for people. Sometimes when um, somebody is going from an employee to being an entrepreneur or owning their own business, we have we still have the employee mentality, right? Because most people, we've at some point been an employee, right? And for an employee, the last thing that you would want 
is for someone to be able to do your job when you're not there. Right. Because that's your entire job security. That's right. So like talk about a little bit about how, um, since we've, we've all been on both sides of the fence to some degree, like how does that play into this dynamic? The being that a lot of people are coming from being an employee where that is diametrically opposed to everything that you is going to benefit you. Maybe not all the time, but talk about that dynamic. Yeah. I mean, I've been an employee for a long time. Right, <laughs> years and years, and so that the the mentality required to then be an entrepreneur, it's completely different. Uh, you're you're not you're not thinking about how can I do this job today in such a way that my boss is uh, benefits, right? You're thinking about how do I do my job in such a way that my employees benefit. Or my customers. And my, or my customers, you know, more important. But as a leader, you should be focused on your employees because they're focused on the customer, right? So the employees are focused. So as an employee, I'm focused on the customer as well, right? So I'm kind of stuck in between. I got my boss and I got my, my clients or my customers, right? So, so I'm focused there. When you move into the leader standpoint, though, it's really, it is about your customers ultimately, but your immediate goal is how do I make sure my employees are taken care of and they have everything that they need and so that mindset is tough because like you were saying, I mean, if, you're, if your whole mindset is around the performance in my job being my identity or who I am and all wrapped up in my ego, and then all of a sudden you're saying you need to step down from that or step away from that and give that spotlight to somebody else, mm, I don't know about that one. That's going to be hard. It's going to be hard. And so if you're listening to this, uh, this episode and, and this is kind of far in your future, you're at an f- earlier step in the Pronto path, this is going to be a really good episode for you to listen to because it's going to help you start changing that mindset and thinking differently now, which will put you in a really good position later on. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's almost like the, the earlier you hear this step and, and kind of some of the things that go along with it, the better equipped you'll be to actually have a transformed business at the right time for you. Are you somewhere in your tax career and feeling lost with what to do next? Do you sometimes wish you had a map to show you your next step to reach your full potential as a tax professional? Here at Pronto Tax School, we have developed that guide. We call it the Pronto Path, and we want to share it with you for free. Go to taxpronation.com slash path right now. Those are some great reasons why a lot of people don't reach this transformed uh, business stage. All that being said, there are some really great benefits to having a transformed business. Uh, I think sometimes when we go through these podcasts, uh, I feel like I get so excited and, and people are kind of like, this is like, you know, is this even fun? Like, how <laughs> do I going to sign up to to do this, right? But I'm just being real with you. Is that you go into any business if you want to get into the real estate business, you want to be a stockbroker, whatever. Like, correct me if I'm wrong, but these careers and this capitalist society that we have, there's challenges everywhere, sure. and so many things changing, and everybody's got to work hard. Yep, grass is always greener on the other side. So. Water your own grass. <laughs> yeah. And, that, and that's basically what we're talking about doing is, you know, taking care of your business wherever step that you're at. Um, but I do think that it's important for us to envision that result of the transformed business because that it is, it, it, if you, if that's what you want, like that's for me, Jeff, is that's what I always wanted out of the tax business. I was like, this would be a great business to build up learn it, learn it inside and out and all that. But this could be the type of business where I wouldn't always have to be there because I could be providing opportunities for other people. They could be doing their thing and building up their client relationships, whatever. I could see how this would work out. And so we have to keep in mind that when you're not somewhere and you're making money and you're not working, that that's awesome. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, that is like super great. Is that technically passive income at that point? The elusive? Because a lot of people, they say there's no such thing as passive income, right? They gave up. <laughs> they gave. That's what it means. They gave up. <laughs> it is possible in the tax That's what business. it means to me. <laughs> so what we're saying is, is you can achieve true passive income at some point. Well, first of all, I don't believe in anybody ever saying 
except maybe in one or two things that I'm not thinking about right now. But I can't <laughs> I can't picture a situation where you would say that's not real. Like that's not you can't do that. Because people have done so many things that you would think that you right. they could never do. Right, so right, like, right. it's not passive income. Yeah, you, you that may be your perspective is that that's impossible or that's a myth. But I guarantee you, there's thousands of millions of people that are enjoying that right now. Right. You know, if they have dividends from stocks or whatever else, like what right. are they doing to do that? Right, Nothing. Right. It is passive income. Right. So I think that there there's still such a kernel to truth to that that you know the way that I put it is that. You have to work really hard to get passive income. Mm-hmm. Yep. It doesn't like, it's not just like a, a box that you check. Like, <laughs> I'll take the passive income <laughs> with a side of not doing anything. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, I want two of those. You know? <laughs> I think if you listen to this podcast long enough, you've realized, oh, wow, there is a lot of work here. But what I'm trying to paint here is that it's worth it. Yeah. And I, I, think, I think it's what, what is freedom worth to you? Like, what is the fact that, like, I remember when I was going full time into doing the tax school and kind of had stepped back from the client work. I mean, I was so anxious about like the offices, like performing when I wasn't there or whatever else. And I remember a couple of times, like one, one time in particular, where it was literally April 14th. And like, I was at the beach not doing anything related to taxes. And I had three great people that were making more money than they'd ever made in a day. And we like brought in like $12,000 or something like that that day, which is a nice day for a tax office. And I didn't do anything. Like I was, <laughs> I didn't, I don't even think I even got a phone call. <laughs> but at the same time, what's cool about it is that people think that if you want to not, if you want to have the option to not be at your business and have it still be okay, that that's like greedy or lazy or something. But no, because you're providing opportunities for someone else to reach their potential that they wouldn't be able to do that unless you step back. Yeah, go back and listen to all the episodes again. <laughs> <laughs> you failed at some point, <laughs> but but I think uh, that was like one of the best th- uh, things that I you know because I was feeling relaxed. I was like, you know what, I'm not stressed out at all because I put in the work to uh, to train these people. I have confidence in them. I know that they care about the clients. Um, they're going to do their hundred percent best. And you know, if they need my help, I'll log in around eight o'clock tonight. And I'll see what's going on. And other than that, you know, I really, this isn't my job. And I'm going to go ahead and just let this business perform as it needs to perform. And it was actually a great feeling of accomplishment. And uh, I like to have that option, you know, for other, for other people. Yeah. And if there's an employee listening to this and they're going, oh, that guy, my boss is at the beach, you know, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Okay. You don't have the right mindset because your, your boss, you know, in your case, you is going to give you the opportunity to one day do that. Right? So aspire to that. I think that's been something that's really cool about putting together this kind of roadmap of uh, these nine steps is, you know, this is stuff that we don't want just for ourselves to just like be greedy and be lazy. No, it's like, this is something that we all can aspire to and work towards. And yeah, you're absolutely right. Like if it's, if, if we deserve after going through all these other steps to have the opportunity to not be somewhere and still make money, I would want that for somebody else too. And like, so how do we get there? You got to be willing to pay. You got to pay the cost to be the boss. That's right. But it's, it's definitely doable and it's pretty awesome. So you're at this stage, you, you can now do something else with your life. You can have a second career without throwing away your first career, right? Um, you can travel for extended periods of time. Uh, you can do what you want to do, right? I mean, this is kind of a very freeing point in your life. And hopefully, if you've done the right things, you're not going to be consumed with how do I sell my business or how do I, you know, pass on my business or, you know, you, you will have, have the right mindset going through. Because you don't need to hastily exit because where you are now, your transformed business is working well and is generating profits for you. That's right. And um, yes, there there will be ups and downs. There will be things that happen that maybe you know you need to adjust course at some point. But when you have that transform business, the same things that you're going to do to create a transform business uh, now for yourself that you don't need to sell would make your business so much more valuable if you did want to sell it. Yeah. So you're you're doing the same things either way, and uh, you know that you're in the driver's seat. So um, I think a lot of people in the tax industry are in this position right now. 
you know, or we have a kind of a graying industry and in that a lot of the top people are over age 60, a uh, very high percentage. Right. And you got to prepare for that, right? Because I mean, unless you're, unless you have super genes and you're going to have peak energy at 96, right? <laughs> I mean, I kind of feel like it's it's like almost like football where you're the star quarterback and you're asking yourself, am I going to come back for another season and try to do another run for the Super Bowl, right? I mean, it's just so traumatic to watch, you know, these guys and they just abuse their bodies in such a way that it's like, wow, you know, can, can, I, can I do it another year? Do I want to try it or do I want to retire? And so what you're saying is, is, you know, a lot of folks listening that are, you know, they built up a business, they have something very valuable, they have a client base, and now they just don't have enough energy to perform at the level they want to perform at. So, so they, they're asking, what do I do? You know, do I, do I sell it? Do I just shut it down? Do I pass it on to my son or daughter or my mentee? Do I, you know, what do I do? Or do I just try to keep running, keep running the business and just see what happens? But the first second they get to that see that tax season where it's too much for them, they get overwhelmed, they get swamped, you know, the wheels start coming off. Yeah, and I think a lot of times it shows up in our industry by by an illness, you know, because uh, some of the hours that we put in and the work that we do, and think about all the stress that we absorb from clients about their own tax situations. You know, like a lot of people get so stressed out just about even their own tax return. So if you multiply that by seven hundred. <laughs> right? You're dealing with 700 stressed out people that to them, that's a really important part of their financial situation, their year, all that. You can absorb a lot of stress and it, it can take a toll on you, uh, you know, physically, uh, not to mention mentally, you know, spiritually, every, er, everything that you can imagine. And I know that there's people out there, Jeff, that they do a lot even tougher work than we do, you know, whether it's, um, you know, people like your dad that are in the military that, you know, we respect for all the courage that they have or, you know, people that are working 12 hours a day in a factory. So it's no disrespect to anybody else, but just saying like, it is respect to you uh, tax professionals that are out there that put in those hours to say, how can you have a transformed business or even a transformed career where something that, you're doing now can live on beyond you know beyond yourself because we're all not going to be here forever it's yeah. just the way that it is so what would you say to the tax pro that's thinking well i'll just sell my business to h&r block or liberty tax i'll just i'll just sell it to a franchise and be done with it i think that's a lot of people's exit strategy right now you know that is literally the exit strategy for a lot of independent tax professionals so um, a few things about that. You don't have the leverage to make a good deal in selling your business when you don't have a transformed business. Mm. When your business does not run without and, and is not profitable when you're not there, and then you're going to remove yourself from that business, just think about it as a buyer of a business, right? Sometimes we get caught up so much in our ego and we got this many clients, I got this much revenue. But look, if you're the owner and you're doing 70% of the billing or you're doing 50% of the billing, the buyer is going to look at it and say, okay, well, when you're not here, that means the business is going to be 50% less. Yep. So you're sitting here thinking like, you know, it's kind of a rule of thumb in the, in the tax business that your business is worth like between 1 and 1.25 times your gross revenue. Which is extremely low multiple. I mean, I mean, look at most other businesses. I mean, you're at five times, ten times, sometimes twenty times, and you're saying this is one point two five on the high end. That's crazy. So multiply. Let's say you have a three hundred thousand dollar tax business. You know, you're doing three hundred thousand in billings, right? You might think to yourself, "This is worth three hundred thousand. You'd be working your whole career building up that number or whatever, but then you come to sell it. And if you don't have that transformed business, if you haven't gone through all the steps that we just talked about, right? Mm -hmm. You're not going to sell it for 300000 mm. And so let me talk about a few of the terms that go into that type of transaction. Because like we've been mentioned many times in this podcast, I know our listeners, you guys are, you know, you're, you're analytical. Sometimes, um, you know, you want to hear those numbers about what's going on. So let's talk about uh, some specifics about selling your tax business. 
So if you go to sell your tax business to HR Block or Liberty Tax um, or Jackson Hewitt or a larger franchise, now don't take this as any specifics or that, you know, this is some like trade secret or something like that. But there's just a few things that are going to come into play. And this will come into play even if you sell to another independent uh, tax business is that um, if you have a transformed business, meaning that it runs and is profitable without you being there, you have so much more leverage because you don't need to sell. Right. You don't need to sell. You could just not be there. Right. Right. And I'll give you an example. We were negotiating a couple of years back um, to to buy one of our local competitors uh, who had reached out to us and said that he was thinking about selling. It was a really good negotiation, a very good business owner. He was never at the business. So he didn't need to sell. Like we couldn't get a good deal because he didn't need to sell. You <laughs> yeah. know, so in that yeah. case, it was like we couldn't really make a deal because like he didn't really need to make a deal. And we didn't really want to pay like more than we thought that we needed to pay. But also at the same time, it was like respect, you know, like <laughs> respect to you. Like you, you you pulled that off. You're not there. You have employees running it and you're pulling 90K a year into your bank account from not being there. Pretty nice. Uh, that's a transformed business, right? right? So first of all, you have that leverage when you're when you're talking about selling. You don't need to sell, right? That's number one. And, and let me just stop there for a second. So if, if you're over, you know, a certain age, 50, 60, 70, whatever it is, you might be thinking that your business is going to be your retirement. Right, you you've been cash flow positive each year. Exactly. That's paying your salary, but then you get to the end of you know wanting to quit or wanting to just do something else, not necessarily quit, but you know, you live the life on your own terms. And now you're getting to the point of thinking, oh well, I'll just sell my business and that will be my retirement. And the rude awakening that you're saying that I'm hearing is that you're not going to get as much money as you think. And there's a lot of work to do if you're not at this step in the pronto path. There's a lot of work to do to get your business ready. So those listening to this that are at an earlier step in the Pronto Path, this is that's a prime time to start thinking this way uh, with the end in mind. Uh, unless you are Superman and can live indefinitely, <laughs> you're, you're going to need to put the right things in place to have a transformed business. I'll let you get into the next step, but I just wanted to say, like, if this is retirement for you, make sure you're you're you have a transformed business. Because you're exactly right. I know a lot of people that are on this step are going. This is going to be resonate with you. And if this is making you a little bit uncomfortable, it's only because we care about you and we want the best outcome for you. Right. So this is just is is yeah. It may be a little uncomfortable. It is uncomfortable. Um, but when we take certain actions we can put ourselves into a better spot. And so that's that's all we're talking about here. And um, so, yeah, I think absolutely. Because remember with tax professionals that are especially self-employed um, or business owners, like we've been pumping so much money back into our business that we're not like normal employees a lot of times where we've been getting a 401k match and all that and building up all these point. big retirement accounts. Good point. So you, you make an exact, you know, that is the exact situation a lot of people think this is my retirement. So when I sell it for one times gross, but let me, again, let me, let me give you a few things that are going to occur in that transaction. So number one, if you have no leverage, because if you leave, the business value is going to be cut in half. Okay, you're not gonna. You're already gonna be off to a tough start in the negotiation, right? Yeah. Because you got to understand that places like HR Block or Liberty Tax, they're they're full of people that are very smart and know exactly how this business works, right? They're not confused about what occurs when an owner that's doing seventy percent of the bill, uh, billings leaves. They have no. There's no mystery to it, right? So if if, if that type of buyer, or really any buyer. You want to have some kind of confidence when you go in to have a negotiation that if you say no, I don't want to sell, you're not totally behind the eight ball, right? So that's that's A. Secondly, um, if you go to sell your business in that manner, you're going to have um, some format, you know, 99% of the time, I'd say, of what's called a clawback provision, meaning that you'll agree on a purchase price, right? Or a sale price, however you want to, you know, put it. Whether depending on whether you're the buyer or the seller, you'll agree on a purchase price, and normally that will be attached in some way to your gross billings, right? There's other ways to calculate it too, like multiples of your net income or whatever else. Um, but you'll have a purchase price, right? And then you'll have a payment term, normally like five years, 
And if your revenues fall off after you leave, the purchase price adjusts downward. So in other words, a portion of the purchase price would be clawed back uh, based on declining revenues. So again, that, that forces you as a business owner to say, can my business run without me being there and maintain the same level of revenues? And if not, I'm actually going to get paid less. So you're not just going to get some chunk of cash and have the person be like, enjoy your retirement, right? Uh, you're going to be tied to how much money that business makes when you're not there. Now, third point is that you're not going to get to not be there for probably about two years. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to actually be actively handing off your clients to the new owner. And you're going to actually be there and be working for the company that you're selling to. Good point. Yep. So a lot of the uh, like us lone wolf tax professionals or something like that. That's I feel, I'd never do that. I'd never, <laughs> never, ever even consider that. Okay, well then the purchase price will likely reflect right. the fact that you're not doing that. That's right. Right. Uh, so you might get like a stipend or something like that. But a lot of times in these deals, they try to just build that right into your like the purchase price. Okay, we'll pay you this. All you got to do is just work two tax seasons and contact all your clients personally and hand them off actively and and vouch for for the new owner and all that. And so we can understand like, you know, if you're a uh, Liberty Tax, H. Ronald Bach, or anybody buying a business, we can understand, right? That's important. Like you can understand the buyer's perspective too. But these are a lot of things that as we're going through our lives as busy uh, business owners and professionals, like if you don't know about that ahead of time, yeah. that may change a lot of the things that you do leading up to that. And so another thing that I would uh, add about selling your business is your metrics of your business are going to be very important to the purchase price. And there's two particular metrics that I would point out that a lot of people don't think about if you haven't been in these type of negotiations before is percentage of the billing done by the firm owners. What is that number for you? How much of your total revenue is from work that you personally perform? They're going to look at that metric, right? And the higher that number is, the lower the multiple of your purchase price, right? Because when you're not there... A lot of that business won't be there either. That's the thought process. Uh, second, uh, uh, it would be shareholder discretionary earnings, which uh, SDE, which is a kind of a fancy way of saying how much money is the owner getting out of the business. So either through their commission, their salary, plus their profit share. So what does that number look like? Because that's the number that if you buy a business, you want to pay a manager out of that. And then see how much you have left over. Yeah, that's your free ca cash flow. In a way, free yeah, cash flow. exactly. Are you thinking about getting into the tax business, but not sure where to start? Maybe you're not even sure the tax business is the right fit for you. And you don't want to invest a lot of money or time quite yet. You just want to get a taste of tax knowledge and see if you like it. Or maybe you're an experienced tax pro and you see someone else in your world who needs an introduction to the tax business, but you don't have time to teach all the basics. If either of those situations sound familiar to you, you need to check out the Pronto Tax School Basic Income Tax Course today. It's fun, entertaining, and gets you a real IRS credential. Go to taxpronation.com slash basic to find out more. If we have a transformed business, what kind of multiple can I expect if I have that? I think to outright sell your business, I don't think that a lot of people pay more than about one and a half, uh, 1.5 times your gross earnings. I think that you can get more than that if you're really a good negotiator and you really have a transformed business that not only runs itself on its current client base, Jeff, but has a, has a way of acquiring new clients and attracting new clients and grows. So if you have a better machine, you can get a much higher multiple. Sure. And that's why you know if you go to buy, say, a franchise, um, you're going to pay a hefty upfront franchise fee. Um, and you're also going to pay the, the you know, 1 to 1.5's gross earnings of that. Because the franchise fee represents right that we have a system for acquiring clients and taking care of clients that's replicable without you having to be there, mm -hmm. right? AKA, we have a transformed business model. So that's why that type of business normally would get a lot higher purchase price, 
Yeah. So that's kind of scary. I mean, if I'm listening to this, I'm going, if 1.5 to maybe 2, maybe 3, if I if I got a really good story, really good business, if I don't have a transformed business, I'm looking at under one times free cash flow. Like, yeah. So, so <laughs> under one times gross revenue. Gross revenue. Yeah. Yes. Oh, you're looking at, you know, what, what a lot of people are looking at. And that's why, you know, as we'll get into, I think a little bit, probably the next episode is a lot of people are looking at what am I actually going to get out of this business that I put my life's work into? Right. And so we're, we're very interested here in, in helping to make those connections between uh, buyers and sellers that want to work cooperatively to, to respect that, that tax professional's life work and find a way forward that really benefits everybody. But when it comes to just outright selling a tax business, it's not normally going to be some like it's not like a tech IPO, you know, where you're like gonna like bonanza of cash that that comes into it because it's a relationship business, you know. Most tax businesses they're led by one person that is care- most independent tax businesses by one person that has a big impact on the success of that company. Mm-hmm. So. Um, is really important if you if if selling your business is part of your retirement plan, absolutely. Like this episode and transforming your business to be profitable without you being there, even if you're still there, like what could be more important to you than that at this yeah. stage of your career? And I think we'll talk about this more in the the next episode as well. But what if I'm listening to this and I'm saying, okay, well, I'm not going to sell my business. I'm always going to have my business. I'm going to keep it in the family. This is I'm going to leave my legacy to my family. Right. So, so I'm just going to pass this off to my son or daughter or best employee. And why do I have to worry about forming, getting, getting to this step then? I think that's a great question. That's exactly what a lot of people are probably thinking here in this. You know, I won't have that problem of needing to sell my business because I'm not going to sell my business. Right. Right. I'm going to leave it to my son. I'm going to leave it to my daughter. Um, or maybe you do have a key employee that, that you feel that you're, I'm going to be leaving it too. But but let's let's kind of look at the flip side of that, you know. Are they ready for that to be left to them? Right. They they're going to have the same problem in other words as a buyer would. Right? Because in essence they are the buyer. So they're if they're smart, they're going to assess what happens when you leave. How is this going to run? How am I going to run this? <laughs> Let me tell you, man. Coming out of a family business, um, especially with uh, you know, my dad is one of those people that you don't realize all the things that he does, right? Until like he's not doing it, and you're like, <laughs> oh my gosh, like how does this been getting done? Oh, okay, it's because Kent was up at four thirty in the morning, making sure we had all our paper. You know, making sure like why don't I have any paper? <laughs> Well, why where's there, the paper fairy coming? Why, why are there flies over there in the trash can? Why is the office so dirty? Like, why hasn't someone vacuumed? Nobody well, hired a cleaner. What, what's going on over here? Yeah, I think I think a lot of um, you know, again, our, our independent tax professionals. A lot of us are are offices of one to four or five people. Right, it's a small environment. So you you have that one person that's not there that they've been a huge part of the success. If I'm the person that's left there, even if I am your son, like it just because I'm your son doesn't mean that I know everything that you know. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Especially as like, uh, you know, some, some people are better at communicating all those things than others. Right. Not always the communication between family members. Like, let's face it, sometimes <laughs> it isn't all it's cracked up to be. <laughs> and you know from personal experience. I mean, you're sitting there trying to like understand the person. And you're like, you know, I could understand them on a genetic level of like, <laughs> I see certain similarities, but, uh, you know, sometimes it's hard to communicate between a father and a son or mother and daughter, uncle, you know, uncle and nephew, right? The communication can be very challenging. So, you know, we had an example here, something that we saw of our, in our Pronto Tax School network, where we had um, a, a customer, a member who had a tax business, thousand clients, you know, and just uh, one uh, full-time person, kind of right-hand person, and then one other seasonal person that would come and help out during tax season, right? So nice, solid business, thousand clients in business for more than 20 years. A lot of those clients are completely locked in, you know, like they wouldn't want to go anywhere else, right? Nice. And so this person uh, goes ahead and, and, and leave, uh, leaves the business 
uh, to his son. All of a sudden, that business starts shedding clients. Ooh. Because the son is not trained up to do that. Now, just because someone is your son doesn't mean that they know all the things that you know about how to do the technical side of the work. Like this son was coming from a different career wow. and trying to like step into this role. I mean, think about leaving someone that you really love and care about a gift, a great gift of like a great business, but are you really setting them up for success? Oh, yeah. No, you're really not. And right. so that that is what's happening. A lot of times like good intentions only go go so far. Right, you actually have to have the type of business that you know if you're not there and your son or your wife um, or your key employee, the business has to be functioning at some kind of level without you there, or else frankly, it can become a burden to that person, and it can be really a negative thing for your family because think about as a son, like God forbid if I ever had that happen to something that you know my father had built up or I would feel terrible. I mean, that would be such a tough scenario. And so for us as business owners, we got to think ahead and not just um, you know just dump it on the person's doorstep and expect it all to work out. Yeah, you're making a really good point. So I think, uh, I think that answered the question of you know, how important this step is, even for people that are not wanting to sell their business. Uh, you know, if, you, if, you're, if you're not going to live forever <laughs> at peak energy to run the business, you have to be thinking about this. Right. So one of the things that we wanted to do in this episode, and uh, I think this will be helpful uh, as we get to the end here of the Pronto Path uh, here in step eight, the idea of if, if I'm at a previous step, which most people are going to be, right? What am I thinking about at each step to have a transformed business in my mind so that I will make the right decisions and start preparing for this step? Right, so I thought we would go through this a little bit, and and just kind of, kind of bullet point out what we're what we're thinking through in each step. So the first step in the Pronto Path is initiation. Okay, so so at this step, what what are we thinking? You know, we're thinking about getting into the business. We're excited. You know, this is going to be a profitable thing. It's going to change our lives. I want to get licensed. Uh, what what can we do? So when you're know ahead of time or have an inkling or a dream to, to build up a transformed business that is going to have value beyond the you being there every, there every day and working. Um, I think one of the really cool things about this Pronto Path concept and how I think it tests out really well when you think about it is that when you go through every step of this process, every step is able to build on the one before and bring you up to this point. So if you're just kind of dropping into the to our podcast on this episode, <laughs> you might be thinking like, oh my gosh, how could I actually create a business that would be profitable and successful and I'm not there? I mean, that's like rocket science. But if you start thinking, like you're saying, Jeff, on every step, what are the things that I need to do in that step to make this step possible? Then it is very possible for you to do that. And so I think at step one, initiation, obviously... You're super green. You don't, you're just getting into the business, just getting registered, doing your initial training or whatever. But I think your point about beginning with the end in mind and thinking that someday I'm going to build this business so that if I'm not here or when I'm not here, because at some point I won't be here regardless. Um, or my, same if you're if you're in a career, right? Someday this won't be my same job, right? Mm -hmm. So am I making a contribution to this organization? Um, and, and how am I going to do that? And beginning with that end in mind, I think is huge at this step. Um, and, and also, uh, you were talking about the, the people who think like that, doing things like, say, keeping a file of things that you're learning at these easier steps and, and kind of like you know having little printouts or maybe it's a folder that you have on your uh, internet browser, kind of like logging your knowledge a little bit. Well, not just not logging your knowledge, but check this out. When you're starting out, if you're on the initiation step, right, there is no other time in your career that you're going to have the beginner's mind, right? Because, That's true. because you're, you're experiencing all these things in the tax industry for the first time. So all those things that you're thinking, your mindset, all of the different things, write those down. And now that's going to sound really weird. But here's what happens. When you get to this transform step, 
you know so much about the tax industry that you don't even you don't even think like a beginner. Like like you just don't. You can't even comprehend what somebody that has to understand what a 1040 even is thinks about. <laughs> and I have experience with that where sometimes I'll 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 be talking and I'll suddenly realize like the person I'm I've been I've said I've talked for 10 minutes. And the person has no idea what right. I'm even. I've even yeah, because half of it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Half of it is tax lingo, and they're just like over their head. They don't know what you're saying, right? And so, I think at this step, it's key to really, which is, I mean, the tools today are crazy. I mean, you could have video of yourself. I mean, you could record in the memo of your phone some audio, just some journal thoughts, right? I mean, think about. 20 years later, listening back to those recordings of what you sounded like when you first started in your career. And that's gold. I mean, that's like amazing. But you would sympathize then at that point with how important it is to communicate clearly what you're trying to do and and, and train and mentor. And you'll really know, beginning with the end in mind, what you have to what you have to do for those folks as you grow your business. Yeah, I mean, it's so true. And I can just think back, say, to the you know a big fear when you're first starting out in the tax business and actually something that's part of your initiation is getting yelled at by a client <laughs> you know i mean getting chewed out right right a lot of people specifically won't get into the tax business cuz they feel like they can't take that mm-hmm. and so the first time that happens to you if you really sit down and think about it and say when I have my transform business and I'm not the one getting chewed out, somebody else is getting chewed out. What does that person need to know mm. about my experience today that would help them deal with it? You know, like for instance, for me, um, I know there, there was one particular client that I think back to my first tax season where, I mean, she must have come in to the office like 40 times. And, and, and the last time that she came in, she was like in her nightgown and like had a rolled up newspaper. <laughs> like she was going to like beat me. And I was like, <laughs> and it was all because her refund was delayed. Oh, and, 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 and as happens sometimes in uh, with the tax business is that it wasn't even my fault. Like it got seized for some past debt or something like that. But just learning, having that learning experience and then being able to say to somebody that if you're dealing with a situation like that, just listen. But also you got to be firm and be like, Listen, you got an issue with your refund? Like contact the IRS. Like this I don't have your money. You're coming in here trying to stick me up for money and and then tell me uh, I I don't have your money. Right? So what would that person need to know who's dealing with that down the line? That's a big part of the initiation stage preparing yourself for a later stage. Right. And it'll give you empathy, right? In the transform business step, it's going to give you empathy is is what we're saying, right? In the activation step, step 2 of the Pronto path, you know, you're learning the secret of client acquisition. You're building, testing, and validating your your unique selling uh, proposition. How can we be thinking transform business at that step? Well, I think that might be the key to the entire idea of having a transformed business because during this step of activation, you're discovering how to acquire and attract clients. And so if you can actually teach other people how to do that, then your business can can grow and keep on without you. And, and that's something that um, in, in our industry, among independent tax professionals, can be vastly improved. And I think it's something that actually HR Block and Liberty Tax do a great job on training for knowing where your place is in the market and what to say to clients to, to convey your, uh, your unique selling proposition, your value. Um, and having some sales savvy to to your interactions with clients. Uh, When you discover that during this stage, and then you not only um, discover it for yourself, Jeff, but you start to think, if another person, could they do the same as me? That's right. That's right. Yep. Or would they do it differently? Or what would be the same, but but they might do it a little with their spin on it? But what's like the timeless things that I've discovered during this? That's right. um, You know, that, that would be helpful to that person later. Right. So once you establish how you acquire customers, making that a process. And so if you're thinking like a transformed mindset, you're actually building your processes as you do them. And even if they're imperfect and they're not going to be ultimately what you use later, I think this is a key step to do with the transformed mindset because you're going to actually 
systematize your ability to acquire customers, which is going to be a valuable, like you said, a valuable part of your business later on. Okay. And then we get to the next step, traction, getting that, those clients, those first clients on the board and, uh, and seeing that you're, you're getting uh, real traction in your business. Like it's working. Your unique selling proposition is working. You're, 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 you're growing. What can we do at that step? Well, I think building towards a transformed business and, and having a business where it's profitable and successful without you being present. The traction step, you know, you're getting your 50, uh, first 50 clients sort of under your belt. Um, you're starting to have a process for doing your job. Um, and so, for instance, for, for us at, at Pronto, when we were kind of working through how would we get a new person up and running to their first 50 clients, because we know that a professional that's done more than 50 returns is totally different than somebody that's done less than 50 returns. So when somebody's just new, you just want to get them those 50 returns and like get, you know, just what planet you're even on, <laughs> you know? Um, and so when you think about like that traction stage, whether you're logging it um, in, a, in a journal or just keeping track of it in some way, as you're getting traction, what processes are you using to be able to process those 50 tax returns? Because some people, the thought of even doing 50 tax returns, like we talked about, is such a huge thing. So do you have a process for sitting down with a client? Like we use a five-step process. Information, income, deductions, credits, and closing. So every interaction you have with a client should fit into that model. That was something that I discovered during the traction phase because I discovered, hey, if I'm not going to get stuck just doing 10 people's taxes and get pulled into whatever other kind of craziness, I've got to have some kind of process that I'm doing here. So what is that for you? You know, what, What's making this business start to work for you? And, and, and kind of keeping a note of that and, you know, and seeing how that could be useful to somebody else some, sometime later. Yeah. And without the transform mindset, uh, you're not really thinking oh, I'm going to teach this to somebody one day because it's just you, right? So you're, you're subconsciously making these processes, but you're not thinking about it like a process. So what we're saying is, if you're at that step, think about it like a process. Think about it like you're going to teach someone else, even though it's just you. And also you forget. I mean, let's, let's you know, <laughs> it's 10 years later, it's 15 years, it's 20 years later, you forget what it was like to be sitting there trying to do your first 50 tax returns, right? You've already done 10,000 or 5,000 or whatever, right? right. So just keeping that note, um, making some notes uh, during this, this uh, step, I think will help you later on. Tax pros have seen it coming for years. The entrepreneurial wave is here. And that means more opportunity to do corporation, S-corp and LLC business tax returns. With the new tax law, they're even more complex and in demand. Professionals who increase their skill set in this area can expect to become more profitable and successful. Pronto Tax School has the perfect online training course for you called Business Tax Verified with CPA Adam Shea. Find out more at taxpronation.com slash business. And then we get to elevation. So we're, we're kind of making the math work. We're raising our prices. What in this step can we think about? When you're moving towards a transformed uh, business, you're definitely going to be concerned about the pricing power that you have with your clients. Because a new buyer, or even if your son's taking over or something like that, that's a key thing, right? Because it doesn't have to be necessarily that every client has a high price. You know, again, even at, at Pronto Income Tax, right? We have pretty low prices. But the value is there. And so when customers or our clients are always looking, what are my other options, right? And they're always evaluating. So if you, if you are someday not there, what will that force them to do? It'll force them to think, is this still the right value for me? Is this still the right fit for me? And in, in which really quickly goes to, can I get a lower price or can I undermine like, like is this maybe the value's not there because the owner's not there? Let me like renegotiate this, right? So during the elevation um, step of the, where you're, you're raising prices, you're discovering that highly profitable niche that you can work, on, work in. If you're building towards a transformed business, those are two things that you're always going to need to have as part of your business. 
right? If you leave and the pricing power goes down by 50%, that's not going to be a transformed business. If you leave and you were the one that was doing all that profitable niche work... Good point. Yep. So how do you, you know, how, how did this stage, once you're kind of discovering the secrets of how your business and your career works well, again, just keeping an eye out for how am I going to add on other people to this and make it so that even if I'm not here, these things that I'm building um, and learning are still going to have value. Yeah. So it sounds like you're, you're saying we have to track at that stage. We have to track our numbers and our profitable, uh, our margin. So that we're not the only ones pulling the huge margins. And then everyone else that we hire has very low margins to where when we leave the business, it, the business is left with these incredibly low margin clients, right? And, 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 and products. And so we want to keep, keep track of that at that point and really, or even before that, and really maintain that throughout the, uh, the steps of the Pronto Path. Yeah, absolutely. And that's something that um, if, when you come to sell your business or leave your business to, to someone else, that's going to really impact how successful they are in operating your business. So if you can, more you can work on that part of your business now, the better off everyone will be. So then we get to acceleration. And this was kind of the milestone step where you're kind of party, partying hard and crushing making lots it. of money, crushing it. And so I think at that point, what we talked about uh, to keep the transform business mindset in mind is you're really putting your theories and your processes to the test, right? So, so if you did the work with the transform mindset pr- up to that point, now, now you're seeing whether your, your uh, processes are going to make it. <laughs> yeah, and, and a lot of them are not going to. Because you <laughs> right. know, you're, it's kind of like you're in that, uh, you're in beast mode. <laughs> You know, you flip the switch <laughs> into beast mode. And sometimes you are having that joyful experience of, at least I thought it was really fun, <laughs> is that when you go beast mode, then other people around you start flipping on to beast mode. And then you're like, oh, this is great. Like, this is what's all about. We're getting the team going. Everybody's getting fired up. Because a lot of this, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, this whole business thing is like enthusiasm for like what you're doing. You know, enjoying yourself, taking yeah. pride, having fun, taking care of the clients. So um, when you're in this acceleration stage, people are going to notice it. You know, like, this lady's crushing it. Or this, <laughs> this guy's crushing it. They know what they're doing. But if you're working towards that transformed business, how is someone else going to crush it because you're crushing it? Right. Right? Mm-hmm. How does that become a part of your process? Like, say you're that would be common in this stage would be you're destroying it, like you're crushing it. I remember there was one tax season where, like, both Jesse and I, I think, had he we had both worked like 70 days in a row or like something like ridiculous. Wow. And, and it was like, it was good because we were killing it. Like, it was like, this is this is great. Like, I haven't, I haven't made this much before. This is working well for me. But at the same time, you just work 70 days in a row. Yeah. So now you're like really, really tired and you're heading into the last part of tax season when you need even more energy. So process wise, we then later built in like during March, everybody needs to take three days off. Mm hmm. Yep. Okay. Just take the three days off. You know, um, like for me, I always like to watch the NCAA, you know, basketball games. I would never work on those days. You know, take those days off. Just get away from the office, get away from the business. Um, also, you know, what, what kind of vitamins are you taking? Like, what's, what's your health like? Those are things that when you've accelerated, you might, you, you know, maybe saw some of the negative repercussions of not doing those things. And you can build it in so that the next person that you're helping, you can kind of, kind of, you know, keep them tuned up and, and keep them avoiding some of the problems that acceleration stage, uh, it really helps out. Yeah, because I think you can fall into the trap of thinking to yourself, uh, this is just, I'm the exception. Uh, I'm the one that's going to work, you know, 80, 100 hours a week, nonstop for 100 days. But everyone else is not going to be able to do that. But that's okay. I'll teach them how to do it a different way. Well, why don't you model that? What is sustainable? And if you're thinking about the transform mindset and stepping away one day, you're going to start to test that theory, right? Are you as profitable right? Being the person that is doing the sustainable model, not the crazy model, right? And hopefully you're not going to train your people how to work 100 hour weeks and, <laughs> and, and, you know, 
have their health suffer and all that and model that, right? But hopefully you're going to have some kind of balance and compassion and say, okay, here's the actual model that I'm actually following myself that actually works with the right profit margins, with the right processes, and that's how it's going to work, right? And then you teach others. But keeping that in mind and not saying, no, 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 I'm the exception and I'm just going to crush it and then I'll figure it all out next tax season. Yeah, and if you're in acceleration, uh, you know, phase and step, right? You are that beast in the office, you know, that's just like, you're just going and going and going. And so take one day off per week and see that day, like, does your business do any business? Like, do you guys do anything that day? Or is it like, it's just, you're not there. And like, so right, as you're moving towards transformation, you're not going to be there instead of not being there one day a week, you're not going to be there six days a week. Mm. So start now to think like, okay, I'm in full on acceleration mode and that's cool. I'm good with that. But when I'm not in that step, what are the things I can do now to help other people accelerate and also to have my business not go down and suffer when I'm in the next step? Awesome. Does that make sense? Or? Yeah, it does. Totally. So after acceleration is stabilization. And this is actually really exciting because this is kind of the inception moment uh, <laughs> because we're, we're able to start that side business related to the tax business. And you're actually going to test out creating a transformed business within your business. So you actually get some practice. So, so we call this kind of the test run. This is the test run of creating a transformed business. Yeah, I thought that was really interesting when we're preparing for the show. First of all, I'm happy that we even prepare for the show. (laughs) I got to give you some credit for that. (laughs) We're like, you mean we don't get on and just completely wing it? So hopefully (laughs) the preparation is is kind of paying off for you guys as listeners because that's what it's all about first and foremost. Um, But yeah, absolutely. Test run of creating a transformed business when we come to stabilization. Let's talk about like what an example of that would be. You say, you know, you're already in the acceleration, you know, step. You're already crushing it. You're busy. You're getting more clients. You got momentum. You're be able to charge more. You're making more money. Uh, you know, your your personal life is reflecting maybe that you're making more money. Your your whole situation is kind of accelerated, right? When you come to stabilize your business and you say, okay, well. We're doing a nice tax prep business right now. We want to add tax problem resolution as a line of work. It doesn't really stabilize your business if you're just doubling up your workload because that's a whole nother business in its Mm -hmm. own way. Mm -hmm. Like you have to generate leads. You got to meet with those. You got to have a sales process. You got to actually know how to do that kind of work, which is different than tax preparation. Right. So that is going to be a real test of being able to create a business that can run without you. Yep. Because you're probably not going to be able to... You maybe have a role in it, but you're not going to be able to build up a whole other business by yourself normally. Right. There are some people that can do it, but even the people that do it, when you're working two, three businesses, and I've been there, you kind of realize to yourself, like, wow, a lot of these businesses would be working better if someone else was uh, had a role in it, but they were really driving it. Uh, and so I think stabilization process is, um, it is, it's a test run of being able to create a transformed business. And a lot of times that's where you discover you're not at that transformed state yet. Right. You know, and you get to kind of see, uh, well, how, how do I create this, this other activity, this other profitable line of business without me just working a thousand hours a day? Right. And that gets back to the last episode, right? Uh, multiplication. So you know, how do you find those leaders that can create a transformed business that you can mentor into how to do that? And, and, and ultimately, how would they create a division of your company that they could lead and then step away from to do bigger and better things, right? Because if they truly are that kind of leader, they're going to take that role, they're going to lead it, they're going to knock it out of the park, and then they're going to be looking at the next step in their career, right? So you have to be thinking one step ahead of them how are you going to create an even bigger opportunity for them after that's done? So this really uh, kind of creates a very awesome dynamic where everyone's helping each other to grow. Uh, if that's what you want to do, right? I mean, not everyone wants to grow to this big scale, but if you're following the Pronto path and you understand what we talked about in the episode of stabilization, uh, you're, you're going to want to branch out, right? You don't want to have 
one law pass where there's a flat tax or something and it just decimates your whole company. You want to be able to stabilize. Uh, so listen to that episode if you didn't. And then multiplication. So, so let's talk a little bit briefly uh, as we wrap up here. Multiplication, what are we thinking about in that step to form a transformed business? I mean, I think that's one is a little bit of one of those Captain Obvious type of statements because <laughs> you're, you know, when, you, when you're in the multiplication step, right, you're training and mentoring others to be able to be productive, uh, be successful in, in your business. Um, and again, we've had a challenge in this podcast to um, say, you know, this isn't only for business owners. This is for for employees at you know independent tax businesses or even at franchises. It this kind of stuff applies to you wherever you are, and it, it will apply to you in different ways. But certainly, if you are aspiring to have a transformed business where you cannot be there, and the business can still run without you, multiplication is all about finding and nurturing and growing those people that will be running the business when you're not there. Right. Great point. So those, those employees, if you're listening to this and you're an employee, but you aspire to grow in your career, are you the kind of person that will be hired to lead a division? Are you the kind of entrepreneur that has the leadership skills? And what do you need to do to change yourself and grow yourself to become one of those people? Right? To be mentored by someone that has this mindset that is listening to this podcast right now. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't uh, I wasn't sure where I was going with that, but you brought <laughs> it to a good, a good place cuz you're exactly right. And even if you're somebody that's new in the organization, you're listening to to this and you're new at your company, you're the intern or you just got a part-time job, like when you're getting on this wavelength, like you're going to be on the same wavelength as the owner, as the senior people in that's that right. business. That's right. What's that going to do for your career? That's right. Like if you can think like that. That's right. It's going to accelerate your career, uh, career tremendously. So yeah, I did want to make that point though, that even if you're not a quote unquote business owner, you know, these concepts and these steps and, and these things that you can do um, can still help you a lot. And then you mentioned something else too. So, so that kind of wraps up kind of the journey uh, of the mindset you can think at each step. Uh, just a few other thoughts here at the end. So uh, you, you had mentioned the concept of practicing absence from your company. You want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, usually they say practicing abstinence, <laughs> but this is different than that. <laughs> but in sim, you know, I don't know if it's similar or not. Sorry, guys. I just had to get that in there somewhere. Uh, <laughs> The uh, so practicing absence. So when you are so deep in your business, where you are that business, like you're there all the time. Like I remember, you know, when we opened up our West LA office location, I lived right down the street, lived super local, and I loved every day to when we we're building up the business come in before posted hours. So come in like 7 a.m., right? And we're on a really busy corner. So leave the door open at 7 a.m. And basically just be like, yeah, we are open. Like the owner is here. You come in, we could take care of you at 7.30 on the way to work. Wow. Whatever. Because that, that's what I would want if I'm the person driving down the street. I need a notary or whatever. Like, oh, I popped in there. Like that made my life easier. Right. That was cool. That was convenient. We had a laugh. You know, they gave me a cup of coffee or whatever it is, right? So when you are in that and you're living that, you don't want to just go to not ever be in there, right? Just right off the bat. So cold you need, turkey. Yeah, yeah, you can't go cold turkey. You know, you gotta you gotta work up to that. You gotta have times where um, people come in, right? And they, and especially in the tax business, people will walk in, right? And they'll be like, "Where is this person?" Yep. I'm not even, I don't have any interest in talking to you. You look like a secretary or whatever. Like <laughs> I'm trying to go straight to this person's. I'm trying to get this done like yesterday. Yeah. Or I have this problem that I need this person to address immediately because mm -hmm. they're my person. They're my dog. You know, they got my back. <laughs> I don't know who you are. I don't trust you, you know? So you, you need to be able to work up to that point where the clients can come in and they can talk to somebody else. You know, they can have, because a lot of times, right? Like you'll, They'll track you down like wherever you might be. And it's something that that person could have just taken care of right there. You know, and, and like, right, right. Yep. So if you really want to have a transformed business, you need to start working up to that point. You know, like for instance, like the person comes in and it's part of a process to say, what do you need? Right. How can we help you right now? Because he's not here right now. 
he's not here. No, and, and it's not, no, actually, this is his day off. I'm not going to call him. Right. Right. It's yep. not, that's, not, that's not how it works. That's right. So a lot of times we don't reach that as tax, you know, uh, business owners, because again, we, or, or tax, uh, important tax employees, even this, that's where a lot of our value is, is in that client only trusting us. But when you want to build up to having a transformed business, they're going to have to trust other people. Yep. And I don't recommend going cold turkey and not ever being there. Because you don't have the time to have all those moments leading up to that of like, this is how you deal with it, you know, to, uh, with your other, other teammates. Like we would always say if, if uh, you know, if someone wasn't there, they're not here right now. The good thing about one of the cool things about working here is that we all work as a team. So let me see if I can help you out right now, just since they're here and we can just get it taken care of right now. If it's something that they need to uh, deal with, will take XYZ process to have it taken care of. Right. And you need to empower your people to be confident enough to have that conversation. Sure. Right. You don't want to have somebody that's like, uh, 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 I don't have, uh, that's not my job. Uh, uh, right. I mean, that's the client will see right through that and say, no, give me somebody that knows what they're talking about. (laughs) Yeah. That's exactly what they do. And that, and that is, um, the hallmark. One of the hallmarks of a transformed business is that you have people stepping up and wanting to take care of the client's issue, regardless of whether that is their client or not. You right. know, because again, a transformed business, you're not going to be there. So what's going to happen when you're not there? I would see practicing absence and, uh, and working into that, being able to be gone and have your business still run well. It'd be something that you could start working on now um, that would really pay dividends. Well, this has been an action-packed episode. Hopefully, that was very helpful for for the listeners. Let's wrap it up next week. Looking forward to it. Awesome. Thank you, Jeff. I have been Jeff Dolan. And I've been Andy Fry. Thank you so much for listening. All of the show notes for this episode can be found at taxpronation.com slash eight. We've actually created an infographic of the Pronto Path so you can see all the steps in one place. Go ahead and download that at taxpronation.com slash eight as well. We hope this episode made your life a little bit easier and more profitable. Join us next week as we continue down the Pronto Path to talk about the final step, step nine, fruition, leave a legacy. Some never reach this step, but listening to it will help you have the right mindset to prepare for it if that's part of your ultimate goal. It will be a great episode. See you next week. Take care.